video will focus on digitizing your mini DV tapes. I will be using my old Canon Elora 40MC mini DV camcorder, which has a play mode. Any mini DV camcorder with a play mode will basically follow the same procedure, but you may need to tweak a few minor things. Um, I ran across several issues while trying to figure this out and I'd quickly like to share them with you so you don't have to spend the same time, energy, and money that I did. First, I read through the instructions that came with the camcorder. Luckily, I am quite the pack rat. An organized one, but a pack rat all the same. So I had everything that originally came with the camera, including the 64 megabytes SD card, all the cords, tapes, batteries, cleaning kit, software, discs, and manuals. The instructions were not very clear on how to get your tape digitized. It did go through the transferring of your tape to SD card, but you can only tape 10 seconds at a time. And I've tried a new high volume SD card and formatted it and followed the manual, but the old camera just didn't recognize the new card. Um, never does the manual say that you can record more than 10 seconds at a time anyway, so I imported all the still pictures from the original card and gave up on using the card for transfer. Next, I tried to download the software that came with the camera, hoping that the camera would be recognized by the computer through a USB. However, the disc that came with the camera that we bought in 1990-something was made for Windows or Macintosh. Yep, not Mac, Macintosh. Which means um, the Windows OS was no la later than uh, 98, and the uh, Mac was somewhere b around the 1997 time frame. I use Windows 7 most of the time, but I tried to download it and then go to the Canon site for any updated versions, and the updated drivers only went to XP. So I got out my old trusty Windows XP laptop and installed the software. It took forever, at least by today's standards, and it didn't recognize the camera anyway. It looked like I was going to need to find a PCMCIA card to FireWire connection, and that just seemed crazy to do with an old PC. So the third and final option was to figure out a way for the new computer to recognize the old camera. Since I work with all kinds of video, I had lots of different reader plugs added to my PC when I had it built, so it was a matter of which cord to use to try to connect the camera to the computer and have it be recognized. The camera has several output mediums. S-Video, Mini-B USB, DV, and AV. Here are all the options I had, and I tried most of them without success. DV to FireWire, Mini-B to Standard, USB, S-Video, and all these connectors. In the end, what worked was my Roxio VHS to DVD dongle. I attached it using the AV to RCA cord. AV to RCA cord. And this solved both hardware and software issues. This software is easy to use and I've been using it regularly to transfer VHS tapes to digital files so it was nice to see it has even more uses. Go to treasuredarchives.com and click on the links page to buy the Roxio Easy VHS to DVD. It does have a piece of hardware so uh, it's more than just a download, so you'll need to have it shipped to you, but that's easy enough. Once you have it hooked up and plugged into a USB port, turn everything on and place the tape in your camcorder. Open your Roxio Easy VHS to DVD software and click on Record, Edit, and Save. Name your video, my training video. Click Record and then Play on your camcorder. Let it play through. Right, 
Then click the square to stop recording. Click on the arrow. Choose where you want it saved. I like to save it to my computer so I can edit it. And then choose where your computer, where on your computer you want it saved and click export. It will upload and now you have a digital copy of your mini DV tape. The other snag that I ran into during this process was the remove cassette error. My camcorder kept giving me that error and it happened over and over and it was very frustrating. wouldn't play my tapes. I used compressed air inside the camera around the cassette workings thinking that although it had been neatly packed away um, it may have collected dust over the years. It seemed to help a little but not with every tape. So I checked online and sure enough there was a YouTube video addressing this very issue. Thank you Trot and Bob for your video called Remove Cassette Error. You can watch that for more detail, but here's the bottom line. These camcorders tend to over rewind their tapes, so you need to get them started manually. And to do that, you release the tape regulator with something like a toothpick, or I'm using a small screwdriver like this one. And then while holding it down, you use a standard size Phillips head or a pencil re eraser and turn the left side 10 turns. I found that a few of my tapes needed more turns but start with 10 and then you can always um, use additional ones or tape or rewind it some more. Um, this also worked well when I had to manually rewind a tape that had gotten eaten and wrinkled in the recorder or the camcorder. Um, using this method I saved the tape and my precious memories of my oldest grandson. So um, definitely well worth the time and effort. Good luck!